Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, back here with another tutorial. Um, just like my last one, again I'm looking at a lozenge form and um, some other challenging, uh, semi-challenging sort of geometry transitioning from a, from a lozenge into a couple of circles on the interior. Um, where you might see something like this, uh, speaker detail, um, porting on a speaker, a um, button recess, uh, all sorts of things, turn it rover and it could be, could be a surface that lifts up to a couple of knobs. Um, so again it's a bit of an arbitrary kind of form but it shows a couple of techniques that could be, could be useful. Um, and the main thing, if I turn the lines on here, is that if you look at the circular or spline perimeter around the outside here, if you carry that through the circle on each side, the outside of the blend intersects with each other. So the challenge is how you create uh, these surfaces here, which is sort of like the, um, it's almost like a Y branch um, sort of challenge. Okay, so just to speed things up, I've already created the model, so I'm going to roll back to the beginning of my tree and just go over each feature, just turn my sketches on. So I've created a, again, arbitrary over, overall size, um, making sure that the uh, width is narrow enough so the, the perimeter of each of my circles, the outside of the blend, intersect with each other. The next sketch down I have created a spline which creates the full round on the end. Uh, this is the same as, similar to the lozenge button tutorial where I have a spline, in this case it's a degree 6 spline, single span 7 CVs, um, which is creating the full round. You can see here there's my construction, that's an arc. So the arc ends here and you can see my spline, style spline, not the, uh, not the uh, old spline, I only use this style spline now, it's much easier to control. But you can see I have an offset um, that is pushed back from the centre of my construction arc. Uh, again, if you watch the tutorial where I uh, cover lozenge buttons, that will explain this in detail. So if I turn the curvature on for my um, spline, you can see it transitions from a line um, smoothly, fairly even curvature around the curve and then back into the line on the other end. I'll just turn the curvature off. Okay, after that I've created a plane which is an offset from the top plane. This is basically my height and then I've extruded the spline up to the height plane, 10 millimeters. And then I've created a sketch which I have then made into a planar surface on the top as a cap and then I've created a sketch which is basically I will trim this back and that will be my top um, I'm going to have a flat area before I start the transition down into the, into the circle okay so you'll notice here in this example Around the exterior of the form I've used a spline, but because I'm going to use a revolve to create the, the boundary of the transition down to the circle, I'm using an arc. So I don't think people will really notice that slight variation, especially because there's not going to be a hard edge here. So that that's the arc there, and that's an arc there, whereas that's the spline, so I've lost some material there. Anyway. Let's carry on. So I'm going to use that curve to trim the top planar surface. Then I've knitted those faces together. Okay, and now I've created another plane, which is my whole depth. So I've offset that off the off the plane I created for height. So that's the depth. So this is where the small circle is going to sit. Okay, and now I've created a sketch on that plane, which is the whole diameter. Next I'm going to create my main revolve section. So I'll go in there and edit it. 
so we can have a look at what's going on. So this is a degree 3 spline, which means it has 4 CVs, being single span. So three of those, <coughs> excuse me, three of those CVs are dedicated to getting curvature continuous connection to our planar face on the top. And the last point is we've got a positional constraint. So it has a pierce point relationship with the circle. Okay. Uh, again, as I covered in my lozenge button um, tutorial, if you want to create a curvature continuous constraint to a line, you do not need to use the curvature continuous constraint because uh, if you line one, two, three CVs up collinear, in a collinear constraint, in this case to a horizontal, they will be curvature continuous. And you can see there with the curvature plot, it runs down to a point, so it runs down to zero curvature as it hits the line or the planar face. Okay. And just for, to make things uh, simple, I've made these two sections of the control polygon an equal length constraint, and I've got an angle constraint on this end, so you can tweak the form. Okay, and I've put a centre line in around the centre of our circle. So that will be the centre line of the revolve. So I have created a 180 degree revolve. So I'll turn my sketches off, if I bring up zebras, zebra stripes, you can see there there's no tangent break between the planar face and my blend, my revolve. So I'm happy with that. Next thing will be how do we create this blend here with a kind of Y junction in the middle. So I've created a sketch for the centre line section of my blend, which again, same as the revolve section, uh, it's got a curvature continuous connection or relationship with the planar face by having one, two, three CVs, all collinear and horizontal. Set with this spline, instead of having one point on the end, I want another point. I need some more control because I want to make this tangent across the middle line. So this is a degree 4 curve with 5 CVs and I've just got control over the depth in the middle there which I might want to tweak later. Okay, And I also have created a centre section too. So if I hide this revolve and forget about it for a while it sort of becomes more obvious. So we're going to have to trim the revolve at some point and then create what looks like a five-sided surface but in reality I'm going to trim it back so I don't have to create a five-sided surface. Okay, so my other centre section it is not curvature continuous here to the centre line. I haven't created a line and then put three CVs in a row. I've only got two CVs in a row, horizontal. So that's tangent connection because when this gets mirrored over it will have the same curvature across the boundary. So it will be curvature continuous. Um, so this is a degree 2 spline, which has 3 CVs. And again, I have a an angle constraint dimension. Okay. So, I've extruded those two centre section control sketches. Now this is the tricky, well it's not that tricky, with the revolve, it's like, well, where do I trim it to create a four-sided surface? Because I'm not going to use the fill surface. I don't want to use um, five boundaries. I want to do this with a with either a loft or a boundary surface. So what I've done is I've created a plane with three points. So we have two points that lie on this line here for our extrude. And then that pivots through the axis up onto... The 90 degree or where the where the revolve um, deviates from the line on my top surface there so that happens to be 90 degrees and with that plane 
I'm going to use it to trim back the revolve, which leaves us with a four-sided boundary, like that. So, boundary surface. In this boundary surface, I have two, two curves or edges in one direction and two edges in the other direction. So I have specified a curvature continuous constraint to our revolve and a curvature continuous constraint to a planar face because the other boundaries are, are along our mirror lines, our mirror axes, then they only need to be tangent to face and I haven't set up the construction geometry to be curvature continuous so therefore it would be, uh, would be it would have an error anyway. Um, and in one direction I have filled out the surface with the as you can see, that's pretty nasty. Um, something to do with boundary surfaces, you always need to play with the tangent influence to uh, make the surfaces fuller. So, therefore, that's much better. Hit OK. I'll show you what this looks like with the mirror. Not a mirror, with the ze zebra stripes. OK. So, looks it good up here. That looks hard to tell but it looks like a curvature continuous constraint there, there's no hard um, angle change and it looks like there's no tangent breakdown here either. So I'm going to mirror those two surfaces across and then we're going to mirror, we'll knit that together and we'll mirror everything down the z-axis and again knit that together Okay, and have a look at that with the zebras on. So I'm fairly happy with that. Everything looks like it flows okay. Um, and we also have some flexibility as far as um, if you wanted to make the whole say 90 degrees. So it's 90 degrees there but I've got to change my other sections. Centre section is okay. Centre section 2 will make that 90 degrees. Okay. So now that hole goes from 0 degrees through to 90 degrees. Um, you can play with the hole depth, make it deeper, um, and, and we're still retaining the smooth transition through here, the kind of Y junction. Make the hole diameter smaller. Okay, and we've still got that big blend and everything looks like it's working okay. Just going to try running a fillet around the outside. Should run okay. Because we have a we have this flat here, so we're not going to have any undulations in the fillet. So there you go. I've seen a phone like that before with a very, very, very small microphone detail on the top. Anyway, um, I hope you found that useful. Um, another lozenge sort of form experiment, how you can transition from a lozenge form um, into another form in a smooth fashion with the surfaces flying nicely. Okay, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Thanks very much.